Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for being here today. Jeez, I hope you like what's coming up today. All right. Today is called, Do You Know You? So, first of all, I'm going to give you a rundown of what we're going to talk about. Okay? I'm going to... (laughs) I'm a nut. I've woken up today and I thought, I'm going to wear my hats today. Because hats... How many times do we say, what hat am I wearing today? Let's just go some of, through some of the hats that I personally wear. I wear the mother hat because I'm a mother. So sometimes I've got to put that hat on or that persona of a mother. Then I'm my spiritual mentor, life coach hat. So I've got to put that hat on. Then I've got to be the hat that goes shopping. So I'm discerning, I'm financial, I'm responsible. So we all wear different hats. So I've got some hats today. So I'm going to show you some hats, okay? Now, I'm also going to talk about hobbies versus interests. What a doozy that one is. And then we're going to play some games. So please grab yourself a pen and paper to do these exercises. There's only two, right? Because one has six questions. So you answer the six questions and then I tell you what your personality is like based on those six simple questions. Now, that psychological test is actually my own. I made it. I created it. I've trademarked it, if you can. um, But it's mine. So please know if you do use this on your friends and boyfriends and girlfriends and other people in your life, go for it, okay? Because I freely say go and use this information, okay? Because the more we learn who we are, the more we can get through this thing called life, right? So the first person I'd like you to introduce you to today is the princess. Oh... Hello, and thank you for coming today. It is an honour that you are in my presence. The reason why I have attended today is because I wish one to realise that one always wants to be the best. One always wants to be the most richest, the most popular, the most sought after character in the life of the story correct so we can all strive to be the princess we can all strive to be the wave wielding queen walking down the street actually she's not walking she's in her carriage correct so we can all be that person so what's the problem with being the queen ow it's stuck in my hair ow Ow, get out of my hair. Get out of my hair. Where's the little thingy? Ah, get out of my hair. Oh my gosh, it really doesn't want to let go. It really does not want to let go of my hair today. Oh my God. (laughs) This is weird. This is weird. Okay, get out of my hair, please. Oh my God, it's stuck in my hair. Okay. Gone. She really didn't want to let go, that princess. And isn't it funny because princesses don't want to give up their title ever. So there's a message right there, guys. Once once somebody reaches the status of princess or queen, (coughs) prince or king, they don't want to let that up, right? They never want to let go of it because it's that power, okay? So today I'm going to show you some little hints on how to identify if you're a queen, okay? So the queen's come. Then the next person I want to talk about is someone non-pretentious. But this is the lady who prefers other people to do her biting while she sits by the pool all day, drinking her margaritas, watching the pool boy cleaning the pool. Yes, we all know these types. So, we all know those types, right? But then, let's just go there more. We may wear more hats. So we take off these. Now, where did I just put my real glasses? I've lost my real glasses now. I can't see. I'm blind. Okay. 
there's a hat you know some days we are blind to what's going on or maybe I should just go there straight away first what happens when we're blind to what's going on is that sometimes we wake up and we put on another hat and it's this one we put on this hat and we say to the world I know the truth behind the lies so I love this one <laughs> okay so now let me find my real glasses because the last person who I want to show you today is our true self so who's me Linda I am non pretentious I say it as it is and I also the psych type that will I don't put on the rose tinted glasses and I don't hide so to me I'm a Jamaican girl let's go there I'm from Jamaica man I sit around and I watch what's going on man and I'm going to tell you straight to your face what's going on man yeah there's no pretending with me okay I say it as it is so that's the hat that I wear a lot my Jamaican hat and I wear it to bed because it's so cold here so we've all got hats so let's go there let's find out which hat suits you the best first of all let's start talking about hobbies versus interests what is a hobby <clears throat> a hobby is something that we do that we like obviously because you wouldn't do it right but we do it all the time so an interest is something that you like to do you've probably done it but sometimes you haven't done it for a while so let's break this down when I first moved into my house eight years ago my toilet overflowed <laughs> see no pretentiousness with me right I tell it as it is my toilet overflowed you don't want to know so I had to get a plumber out he turns up at six o'clock Sunday night and he's got his son who's about 12 years old sitting in the front of his truck and he comes in and the first thing he says even before he says his name is oh I'm so sorry I'm late I've just been up to Mount Tambourine I had a date today and I said oh he had a date and he said oh it's the first time I've ever met her and I'm looking at the truck he took his son to a first time date my little spidey senses were going ee, 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 ee. Why would you take your son to meeting someone who you've never met before? To me, that's a little bit um, irresponsive. But other people may say, no, 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 it's all right. They've been talking for five years. They've, you know, it's their first date. I don't know. So perspective, yeah? We can all do what we like. So he comes in and he's telling me, he just starts rambling. Like, I typically can talk under wet cement. But this guy... He was, yup, yep, 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 yep. I couldn't get a breath in anyway. So he's telling me this story as he's got the chew claw thing going down my pipes to try and clear the blockages. So he's telling me this story that he's just met this girl because he's always on Tinder and, he's, and he goes on Tinder and he's meeting all these women and he's got met this one today and he doesn't know if he really likes her, um, doesn't know whether he wants to see her again. And I'm thinking, well, why did you take your son? anyway so back to me <laughs> and he says oh blah 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 so I interrupted I sort of had to you know when someone's talking so much it's like a fog and you've got to get through the fog to get a word in so anyway I said um oh so you're on tinder all the time he said oh yeah I come home from work and I go onto tinder I'm probably on there for about three hours every night and I said oh so what's your hobbies and interests that you list on there and he said, oh, I go fishing, I love camping, I like going up to rock shows, I like going up and um, walking in the bush. And I said, oh, when was the last time you went camping? He said, oh, six years ago. And I said, oh, when was the last time you went to the bush? Oh, well, you know, I get busy, it's been years. And I said, oh, when was the last time you did this? And he said, oh, I haven't done that for about 15 years. So are they his hobbies? I can tell you what his hobby is because I told him and he didn't like it. I said, mate, do you realise your hobby? You're lying to people. 
You've got interests that you like bushwalking and going for walks on midnight stroll on the beach and all this type of romanticism. But your real hobby is that you spend three hours a day on Tinder. Why don't you put that on your profile so that people know the truth? And he looked at me and went, oh, no, 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 I haven't got a hobby. That's not my hobby. I said, yes, it is, because it's what you do all the time outside of work. You're on the computer on Tinder. I said, that's why you can't find a girl, because when you do find a girl, you're still in that routine, which is a hobby. You're in that routine of always being online looking for another girl. And he went, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, yes, 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 yes. So by this time, he'd finished the toilet. He gave it a couple of flushes to make sure it was working. (laughs) No pretense here, right? He gets in his truck and goes away. And I'm looking at his son. He's on his iPad in the front seat. And I thought, how many dates does this guy take his son to? So what is he teaching his son? To be okay that you're just going off meeting all these girls, but then you come home looking for more girls when he's just met one? And he's wondering why he doesn't like her? I hope you're working this out. Okay? So hobbies is what you do. Don't lie about it, guys. Okay? Don't lie about it. If someone meets you and they say, hey, what do you do at night? Don't say, oh, I go to this group and that group. When you're just sitting at home looking at um, computer, doing, you know, researching groups. You say, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a group to go and join. Okay? Be honest. We don't have to put the tiara on and pretend to be the best person out there. Because what is happening right now on this planet Everybody wants the tiara on their head. Everybody has to be that perfect person. But it's okay to say your world's fallen to crud. It's okay to tell people that you're raw and honest enough to man up, grow a pair and say, you know what, life's not going the best that I'd like it to be at this point. And that's why I'm meeting new people. That's why I'm going to new groups. Because I want to give myself that freaking bloody hope and belief that all this is going to work out. Oh, big words by Linda today. So, hobbies is what you do all the time. Interests, like my interest, I've climbed every mountain at the Glasshouse Mountains in Queensland. Now we're talking volcanic rocks here. They're huge. I've rocked, I've climbed every single one of those except for Crookneck, which is like a big tower of spike. You can't go up there unless you've got 500 foot of rope. And then you bungee jump down because it's just so high. It's just straight down. Rock face. So that's the only one I never climbed. And I did that 35 years ago. So it's an interest to go back there but it's not my hobby okay so when you meet someone and they say oh what's your hobbies be honest it's what you do now if you come home and you've got 16 kids and and you come home from work and you're dead tired and you're thinking oh my god look at the house it's a bloody mess i now got to cook dinner for the tribe and then you just fall into your chair exhausted and you want to find a boyfriend, well, why would you want to find a boyfriend when you've got no time to invest in him? But just say you do, why do you lie and say, oh yeah, I do this, I do that, I do that, because then he meets you and it won't work out, okay? I had a friend, she she met a guy at a pub. So he's there all social, yeah, having a couple of drinks, he's there having his happy days, She was only there because it was a work function. She does not go to the pub scene. She's not at pub scene. She's a very quiet girl. So she met this guy and then guess what? He wants to keep going to the pub every Friday night, every Saturday night. He wants to go, you know, twice a week to the pub to see his friends and watch the football while he's having some beers. And she's at home trying to work out why why doesn't he want to stay home with me? Because she can't work out, she met him in his environment. And if she's not going to fit into his environment, it'll never work out. So that's why we've got to be truthful, be honest. Because so many people don't know who they are. This is the problem now. People have been isolated, they haven't been out. 
So one of the things that I say to people, go watch The Yes Man with Jim Carrey because everything he saw, he had to sign up for. He got himself a Russian bride. He was taking yoga classes. He, he went into this class. He joined up for this. He went up for that thing because he could not say no to anything. Someone said, oh, do you want to go to this place next weekend? Yeah, sure. So go watch that movie. I loved it. It was a really good movie, okay? So let's work out how to date ourselves. Oh, I love this example, okay? This is a great way of knowing who you are, okay? And then I'm going to do the six question one. So hang around for that because the answers that you give, uh, let's see if I get your personality right, okay? This is going to be a really cool test. Okay, date yourself. So what you do is you put on your best clothes that you're going to wear to a party or a function or whatever, you know, your favorite clothes. So you put them on. This is my favorite one at the moment. Okay, so I'm just going to wear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, man. Okay, let's go there. So, you get yourself dressed up and you imagine that you're walking into a restaurant. Now, the first thing we've got to learn is what sort of restaurant is it? And I'll take this off so you don't get distracted. What sort of restaurant is it? Is it a cafe? Is it on the beachfront? Is it a five class? Let's get back to this one. Oops, oh my god, it just stuck in my hair again. Now it's all stuck on this side. Oh my god, this really does not want to leave me alone today, does it? Okay. So, is it a five class resort, five star resort where everybody's wearing gloves and all their fineries? So, that's the first thing that you can identify. What sort of restaurant are you going to to have a first date? Because that'll tell you a lot about what your expectations are in life. If you're going into that five-star resort, that shows me that you expect to be the best of who you are. If you're going to the beach and you're sitting on the sand eating fish and chips out of a plastic bag, that shows me that you're not pretentious. That shows me that you are very natural because you're sitting in the sand, which is natural fibers. Okay, so we analyze it and we work it out why we like things. Okay which is going to be great in the next six questions that I ask, okay? All right, so now you walk into that restaurant. Over the back, at a separate little quiet table, you see yourself sitting there. So you walk in, you don't know what to expect because this is the first time you've ever met this person. This is the trick of the how to make this work. So you walk up to you. You sit down. And you observe what they look like. And they look exactly like you do right now. So if you've dressed up and you're looking nice, look at your clothes and analyze it from the other person's perspective. You sit there. Why is she wearing the color black? Why has she got her hair in plaits? Why does she have glasses on? What's this ring she's wearing? What's this chair she's sitting in? Okay, why does she like the red flowers? So you analyze and you say, hang on, red flowers, red ring. Maybe she likes the color red. Huh. What's this with the blonde hair? Maybe she likes blondes. Okay. So you look and you analyze. Then you start asking the questions. Now we think about the questions that you first ask on a first date. The first one would be, my name's Linda, what's yours? So how do you introduce yourself to people? I'm Linda, okay? But people call me Lynn, people call me Linny, people call me Loopy, people call me the lunatic. And I'm being honest. I get Lindsay, I get, oh my God, so many names. I even get Hey You. But I don't get offended by any of them because I don't care about my name. Because I'm more concerned with who I am on the inside rather than this persona that my soul is inhabiting at this point in time. Okay? Wow, that was a big one, Linda. Okay. So we look and we say, hello, my name is. Now you analyze that. Are you happy with your name? Are you happy with what people call you? 
Huh. So what's the next question? The next question is, what do you do? Now, 99.99999% of people say their job. But does the job dictate who we are? So they say, oh, I'm the state head nurse at this hospital. Oh, I'm a dentist. I'm a doctor. I work in a bank. I work at the local grocery store. I work in sanitation and empty garbage bins all day. Does it matter? Does it really matter which job they do? No, it doesn't. The fact that they're employed shows me something about them, and that's integrity. That means I am being self-responsible and (gasps) self-reliant. So it doesn't matter what rank of the scale. Now, remember, to me, there's no rank or scale because everybody is equal with employment. doesn't matter if you're earning 16 billion um, dollars a week compared to someone who earns $2.50 a week. I don't give a heck. The fact that they're both out there doing a job for somebody else and creating something, that is kudos to everybody. If you meet, if you look at yourself and you say, oh, what do you do? Oh, I sit at home all day. I've got depression. Good. Because now we've got somewhere to build on. Now we can say, okay, what can we help you with to get through that? Is that the person you really want to be? So we analyze ourselves, okay? We analyze ourselves. And then the next question that most people say is, have you got kids? Are you married? We all want to know that straight away, right? So be honest with it. And you say, okay, what is my history? Okay, I'll answer this as Linda today. I've been married twice and then I've been engaged to my daughter's father, okay? So I've had three long-term relationships. The first one didn't work out so well because he cheated on me and he was doing illegal activity. So I could not stay with him. Second one, he killed me. Do you think I was going to stay there? And then Tashi's dad and I, we could not um, stay together because of my ex-job and stress, etc. in our lives. So it was obvious that we were going to break up. So I am very honest when I say this to people. So if I'm sitting at the table with somebody unknown today and he says, oh, what do you do? The first thing I'd say is I am now an inspiration to others who have been through crud in their life. Wow. (laughs) Do you see how powerful that is when you say that? Didn't realize it until I just said it. Isn't that so powerful? So we analyze it. We think, wow, that is so powerful. What do you do in your life? Wow. I want to make other people feel good. That's me. Wow. Okay, so what's your family life? You know, oh, I've got a cat. Her name's Mary. She's a feral cat that lives here. (laughs) She owns us. We don't own her. So that shows now I'm a compassionate and caring person. I allow a feral animal into my house every day. And right now she's asleep on my bed. (laughs) So that shows compassion. It shows caring. So even though I didn't even mention those words, my behavior showed it. So when you talk into someone and they say, oh, what do you do? Don't just say, oh, I work in a bank. Say what you do. What's that job description that makes up that employment title? What is it that you do? Not not what your name is. Okay. So what's another question that people could ask at the first date? Oh, what's your hobbies and interests? (laughs) We just covered that one, I hope. So don't tell them what you like to do 25 years ago. Tell them what you do now when you get home. I spent three hours on Tinder looking for a date and here we are. I hope it works out so I don't have to do that hobby anymore. I'm looking to start new hobbies. I want to start looking into my interests so I start doing them again. (gasps) Wow, see how powerful that is, right? So we date ourselves and we analyse the answers to the questions that we give each other because it's ourselves right okay so now this is the good one go grab your pen and paper pause the screen and go and get a pen and paper okay because I'm going to do this one at the same time I've got my blank piece of paper okay let's just go there 
Alrighty, I've just got to blow my nose, guys, because it is so cold here in Brisbane. Okay. Hopefully that gave you a chance to go and get your pen and paper, because this is six questions and it's really cool. I haven't had anyone yet that says this isn't true. Okay, so just remember, guys, I designed this. This is my test. Go and use it on you. You know, if you're having that date with somebody... Ask them these questions because it's going to give you so much insight into it, okay? So what I'll do is I'll ask the six questions so we answer them and then I'm going to go through the six questions and tell you what the answers mean. Boom! Okay, you ready? So number one question. What's your favourite number? I just answered it. What's your favourite number? So you might want to write that down, favourite number, with the answer. Because then you can ask these to other people, right? So keep coming back through and just getting the answers, right? Number two is your favourite colour. <laughs> favourite number, favourite colour. Number three, which do you prefer, day or night? Day or night? Number four? Cat or dog? Which one do you prefer? First first response, cat or dog? Now, what's your favourite animal? What's your favourite animal? The last one, <laughs> water or mountains? If you had to go for a drive today, would you prefer mountains or water? How'd you go? First thing, did you know the answers? Because if you don't know those answers, that shows you straight away that you do not know yourself. Everybody should have a favourite number that they represent with. Everyone should have a favourite colour. Everyone should know where you like to go. So this is, if you have struggled with those questions, please know that's the reason why you're here, isn't it? You want to learn and develop who you are, self-development. Okay, I've just got to write that down because I have to put that self-development and self-awareness of self okay self-analysis because we're analyzing ourselves right okay so when we delve into our psyche of who we truly are we'd know all those answers and don't feel bad if you didn't know them you know one or two there when I first designed this years ago when I was writing Heal to Success which still may come out by the way um, another book on the horizon so it was years ago I struggled with one or two but now I don't because <laughs> I know who I am okay so let's go through the answers number one favorite color, favorite number I wrote down number look here's my answers number nine Okay, so let's go there and analyse what numbers mean. You know how they say you're either in the box or you're outside the box? What I have found over the years doing all these psycho psychological assessments and stuff that you can find online, right, because I've done heaps of them, right? Hello, I've got, I've had, P oh, I have PTSD, okay? So I, I do a lot of these self-analysis and working it all out. Um... People who are inside the box are generally our even numbers, 2468 people, okay? They like being told what to do. They like jobs where they've got a manager. They like that stability and routine. People inside the box um, are people who have policies and procedures in place to keep them safe. They like um, being... I won't say mundane, you know, we don't like mundane, you know, doing the same thing repeatedly every day. So I won't say that, but they do like 
having that structure and security in their job okay if you like me at number nine we're outside the box um i know somebody their favorite number is 27 so because it's two numbers with a two and a seven um the good thing there is is that it shows that they're way outside the box because it's actually two numbers so you know some people have numbers they they are their favorite numbers 342 so they're just showing you they are way way out there well even though it's 342 they're still an even number so they're in the box you know that that could be a like a bill gates type person where they're so out there doing stuff okay right so i hope that that gives you some clarity number nine um, because it's outside that box we like making up our own rules thank you very much <laughs> we like um being able to do what we want when we want to um you know i like doing a video every two or three days so today it was oh do you really want to get onto it do it now or wait an hour when it warms up so time doesn't matter there's no dictation of do it now type things like we do with a nine to five job okay so we like being outside of that box it also stipulates that we're these right we like being conspiracy theories etc okay so i hope that that gives you some clarification there with your number now we go to our favorite color girls and boys when we're young boys like blue and girls like pink and purple those colors represent <laughs> stability reliance from others being looked after the princesses out there they're the ones who like pink and purples okay because they're being looked after okay um they like having like a partner to help them pay their bills they like that personal security that comes with um financial obligations children people that like you know girls that like pink and purple and boys that like blue are generally family orientated because they like that support network okay my favorite color is red now you could say that's a um avenue off of pink because it's red is pink and white pink and um, red and white makes pink but mine is i don't like pink at all i like red because red to me stipulates christmas and valentine's day it represents love it 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 reminds me of giving presents to other people that sort of stuff that's christmas for me yeah i don't look at christmas as what i get christmas is always about what i give to others um so that's why i like red so we analyze the color you know people who like greens are generally very nature orientated they're into their um they like gardening they like sitting out in the garden they like looking at the sky they like going for drives where they're looking at scenery etc okay so we analyze the color that we like and then you know so much more about your um, personality okay so the third question day or night day people are our social people they like being around other people they like not so much being the center of attention okay but they do like being in that social clutter they like going and playing cards at the club or they go to the beach and have coffee at the cafe where there's a lot of other people sitting there they like being around people they're very social whereas night people they're the contemplators they're the ones who think they're our analyzers they're our people who don't mind their their being alone okay they're the ones who understand the line being alone is not lonely okay because it's not and that's why number three question i'm a night person i am a very big thinker i analyze i research a lot so that suits me to a t okay number four cat or dog oh god let's go there with dogs first dogs are pack animals so again very social depending where you are in that pack you're either the runt or the alpha dog so you've got to work out because that's two very big differences right there the dogs are um, the runts are very very reliant 
other dogs in the pack look after them whereas the alpha dog thank you i don't need anybody i'm going to tell you what to do right so dogs are very um social they always have to be thinking okay they're not very good at relaxation they don't know how to meditate well because they're always on the go and distracted with life okay if they're not digging a hole they're working something else or they're coming home and looking after waiting for someone to come home to, oh goody you're home now so we can do something together okay that sort of stuff is a dog okay cats on the other hand solitary they do they don't mind being in groups but you find cats just sitting on a windowsill relaxing in the sun and they're meditating they say that cats are the most psychic animal on the planet oh except for dolphins okay so again you know you might find that you're wearing a hat of the lady sitting with her cabana boy watching him cleaning out the full pool filters okay so um cat people are our analyzers the doers they're the thinkers they're our poets our artists painters etc musicians okay cat people are thinkers whereas dogs are more outward they're more physical and materialistic okay all right hope that didn't offend anybody there but it shows you who we are right as soon as we identify who we are we can always move forward okay so next one favorite animal if you said cat or dog well please reconsider the other what is it three trillion different animals and life forms on this planet why did you stick with just the cat and dog okay so there's a question for you straight away it, you may be an even number where you're inside that box okay so yeah they all connect okay and you also might be a day person um, where you're very social and that's why you still like dogs okay so they all do connect all these questions okay <clears throat> so the best thing to do is if you did write down something weird and wonderful like a seahorse or a mermaid you know your favorite animal might be the eye eye from madagascar because that's mine <laughs> well one of mine i love things that do things that's why i like lockets because they open up and you can do something with it okay i like things that do things so the eye eye is a little nocturnal animal in madagascar and it's got a middle finger that extends out three times the length so it opens up and extends out this middle finger so it can get into the tree branches and stick this finger in there and get out all the termites and stuff to eat them beautiful animal oh it's the most ugliest thing on the planet <laughs> go look at it it's called the eye eye okay from madagascar really creepy eyes but i wrote down my horse because horses wild and free they run like brumbies they're open in the air and they're mane hee! okay i love my mane okay now you know why i like my hair so much okay because i'm a horse i like prancing okay so when i'm not doing my videos and i'm home alone and i want to raise my vibration i'll put a song on my phone and i'll sit there and i'll do my air guitaring and i'll prance around the house in my underwear because hello i'm honest you know what we do in our own house stays in our own house right so i prance around the house doing what i like thank you very much because i am not one of these people who stick to routines i am not a person who lives by rules that are other given to us by other people or organizations or governments okay so i'm the horse wild free running wild okay analyze your animal that you said if it's a dolphin think of it as the same sort of thing but dolphins are highly intelligent okay so research the animal work it out why you like it so much because you'll see commonalities within your own personality to that animal as well okay so let's get there to the last one now water or mountains now the first one i'll go to here is mountains because that's the easy one mountains if you're up on a mountain looking out at the landscape that landscape never changes it's always constant is unchanging so why do we sit up on a mountain looking out over the valleys is because that's where we do our thinking 
That's where we do our analytics. That's where we do our self-development and we're working ourselves out that contemplation. Okay? Contemplation, that's a good word. Okay, I'm writing that one down. So we work it all out when we're sitting up on a mountain. Okay? It's also that freedom of being high is where we're not... Um, feeling built 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 in we're not claustrophobic by isolation laws etc so people who like mountains could be these types okay could be the people out there thinking outside the box so you know you might have um an odd number okay or you've got a really crazy wild color okay so it all fits together now i actually wrote water as my anim as my answer because i don't like oceans i like lakes so let's go there with the different types of water if you like oceans imagine every wave is different every wave crashing up over rocks or breaking some other way is drama it's constant being involved with stuff it's distractions in life so if you like all those ocean waves coming and crashing down it shows that you like a lot of drama excitement in your life you're the one who likes to go bungee jumping you're the one who wants to go and jump out of an airplane okay you're doing that sort of stuff in life okay if you like those ocean views if you like lakes and um you know stagnant water dams right it shows that you're a contemplator it shows that you're inspired and you're also a healer believe it or not okay so i wrote water but i actually like lakes okay because lakes have all those nice little lily pads on them with the flowers and the beetles come and the little froggies are on the on the lily pads and stuff so that's what i like because it's getting back to nature okay then we've also got streams now if you like a stream okay let's go there or a river where it's tidal water comes in water goes out but there's no waves and drama from the crashing of the water these ones are really cool people because they're the cleansers they're our reiki healers they're the ones who like the the constant movement of the water without drama they're our meditators they're our um the ones who can create holistic and um clinics they're the ones who like massage clinics and stuff because the water comes in and cleanses you know like when we're having a shower and the water cleanses us as it goes down the drain so they're the ones that do all that sort of stuff okay so that's the six questions that i wanted to get through today how did you go how well do you know yourself because once we identify all this stuff and we go out there and we say you know what i'm gonna own this now i don't have to be a princess i don't have to be um whoever i'm just gonna be me so you know who linda is and i'm gonna be honest i love my sunglasses because these are john lennon's you know and look at the word john lennon what did john lennon do he didn't give a heck who cared about him he wrote his music he was out there being his own true self he didn't give a butt kiss what anyone else thought about him right why should you words to live by by linda today work out who you are guys and then go out there and own it talk to you again soon bye To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.